Hey guys, and welcome back for a new review. Today we're going to take a look at the 2000 G.I. Joe Ore Striker. So this uh, particular vehicle came with uh, Pathfinder. If you look around the box, it is sealed. So I will crack it open and build it. Uh, pretty cool. Don't have the Ore Striker personally in my collection until now, so... Uh, this one looks to be an exact copy of the 85 version with the exception of the color and of course the driver uh, not being crankcase being pathfinder now but uh, that's it so let's crack it open and take a closer look at the ore striker all right so the package is open and pulled pretty much everything out of the box so you do get the uh, file card uh, sticker sheet and of course the instruction manual for the ore striker it's really cool um, of course you get the figure itself we'll get to him later and then you get two, three, five different bags of stuff so you get the wheels uh, that looks like the shell of the unit the seats uh, some various parts and some trees with some parts on them so go ahead and start opening these up taking a look at them a little closer and I'll get this thing built I'm guessing that's gonna be the headlamps part of the suspension There's the seats and frame of it. Pretty cool. Here's the main shell and roll bar. That's pretty cool. It's got like a uh, speckled sand effect on it. That's nice. That might be part of the engine, engine cover, and of course you get the wheels. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting this together. Alright, so let's get this thing put together. So let's get this popped in. The first step is getting the uh, the front wheel set up all connected so that seems to be in order now and putting that onto the front part of the car so let's see something like this all right that looks good and the next part is going to be the rear end. This fits over and around the back. Is that going to work? Hmm. Let's see. I wonder if this piece needs to be trimmed off. All right, so that actually went all the way in like so. And then wrapped around and it clicks into place. All right, so we got those two set up. The next part, uh, let's see. It looks like we're putting the main chassis on. 
that just slots through there. Starting to come together. Pretty cool looking so far. And next is the wheels. Okay. key is make sure the uh, lug nuts are on the outside as opposed to that way all right pretty cool so far all right so now Next step is putting the engine together. So here we go. There's that. And that just dropped straight in. Looks like all right, so that's in place. This thing is looking pretty awesome. I'm really enjoying this. All right, so the next is the dashboard. light dashboard where's the steering wheel there we go that's it it only pigs in one way And there's a camera. Oh, that must be what this is. Right, let me take a pause and get that cut out. All right, so I got the uh, camera taken off. I put it in slot, pop this in place. So now that's there. Uh, next part is the roll bar. It looks like that just slots into all the tabs. That should be pretty simple. Okay, so that's all set up. Next part is putting together the gun housing. So let's go ahead and do that. It's really fun sitting here just building these uh, old vintage GI Joe vehicles. It's, uh, 
some of the uh, joy that you miss when you just buy vintage pieces that are already built. Of course, this one was not that old. I mean, this is not the 85 version, and it wasn't expensive. So with that, I still get the fun of building it and putting the stickers on. It's a real nice part of the hobby that is really missed in the, uh, I guess just buying uh, used, uh, put together vehicles. This is a route I like to take. It's fun also restoring the vintage vehicles too. And yes, I'm twisting this off like I would have as a kid instead of having plastic nippers here. Not the most efficient way to do things. And I'm also looking back at the instructions, so they don't need this part. So let's stick with the gun assembly. So does the two halves of the gun gotta go together and then clip onto this piece. So That just clips together, and then there's a cap. There it is. And that holds it all together, and then it's going to mount onto this piece. And then straight back here, okay. Oh, I think maybe I was supposed to not put this together that way. I suppose it's easier if you can. There we go, and then hold it together. And pop it on top. All right, so that's that. Let's see, next step, putting in the antenna and then building the front lights. Oh, and then the engine cover too. So let's put the engine cover on. That's super easy. That just pops on there. Both antenna. And we're just about in the home stretch. So let me get this thing off and we'll build the uh, last part of the front end. All right, so I got this disconnected. So let's put the lights in. Got a little square peg, so it only fits on one way. And then this is supposed to just tab onto the front. Yep. There we go. So it's pretty much complete. I did uh, put the wire on during the uh, break. But uh, that's it. The uh, ore striker is pretty much fully built. And it's, it's independent dis, uh, suspension, so each tire can go up. The front ones can, of course, turn. And the back ones also are on that suspension. Really cool. All right, so next step, we'll be putting on the stickers. All right, so I got all the stickers put on the War Striker. So let's take a closer look.
came out pretty nice. I think, uh, I think it looks really nice with the stickers on. It's always kind of the fun part, putting the stickers on, building these. I think it turned out pretty nice. This sticker was a little weird, the uh, latch stickers, because there's actually no place to put it in order not to have this part kind of exposed. Unless I did something wrong, but that pretty much is the spot it goes in. But uh, that's it. That's the, uh, the vehicle with all of its stickers. And now we'll go ahead and uh, get the figure out and just do a brief overview of the whole vehicle. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the figure itself. Uh, we'll start with the file card. So you can feel free to pause and read that. And looking at the figure, it doesn't come with any accessories. So for that, you know, it's a little unfortunate. But I guess, you know, he's a vehicle driver, so it's not really a big deal. He's got the uh, boonie hat pinned up. Some black sunglasses. Uh, very muted color scheme. So it's got like some kind of greenish shirt with a uh, gray shirt over it. Into the, uh, the odd part about this figure, I'm not sure what the original figure may have looked like if there was a earlier version of Pathfinder, but I'm not sure what these two tabs are for. So if you know, leave that in the comment section below. And he's got uh, very wrinkled, sculpted pants. Tiny little pouch on the back. And uh, into some black boots. So pretty simple design on the figure itself. Now uh, taking a closer look at the actual War Striker. Really cool vehicle. Really digging it. Uh, it's a two-seater, but it can hold four G.I. Joes. Uh, I'll show that a little later on. Put all of them in there. Uh, again, it's got the uh, the suspension, which is really cool. The vehicle can, you know, simulate bouncing around. And that's achieved with this uh, simulated leaf spring suspension. So each wheel has it, which is really nice. And, of course... The wheels can turn it does not correspond with the steering wheel itself the steering wheel is mostly a fix it could just kind of turn just a hair which really meant to be in place but still really cool design the uh, glass buggy lights on there or the clear plastic making it look like glass really nice touch for the vehicle uh, the weapon system on here is designed so that this particular camera controls the main gun up top and the main the camera can only really go forwards and back but the gun of course can fully rotate but the antenna does get in the way of full rotation and it can of course pivot up and down really cool uh, looking at the back of it you can remove the engine cover which is a really nice feature so that pops off giving you a closer look at the engine detail something that a lot of the vintage G.I. Joe vehicles would do almost most every one of them of course there's mufflers that pops out through the engine cover the sculpted uh, battery in there and the engine itself is actually removable as well which is a really neat feature so that whole piece can pop out and you can simulate swapping engines. I believe in one of the uh, play sets, uh, they actually made a spot for that to actually be housed. So that's pretty cool. And that just kind of clips right into place. So that's it. That's a look at the... 2000 or striker a remake of the 1985 or striker very cool vehicle like it quite a bit really happy to add this to the collection 
So uh, let's take a break here and I'll bring in some more Joes and I'll show you this vehicle all loaded up. All right, so here's the War Striker all geared up with all four Joes, full complement. Uh, pretty cool vehicle. I'm uh, really happy I picked it up. It was really fun to build and put together, put the stickers on it. It's a fun experience. So I really did enjoy doing that. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, so this was a look at the 2000 War Striker, G.I. Joe. And War Striker, in case I forgot to mention it, uh, is an acronym. So the OR in War Striker stands for All Weather Environment Vehicle. So pretty cool. All right, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. And until next time.